Good morning, everyone. No, really. This is uh, about 20 minutes after I got up. Got my coffee here. There's your free sip outside of Sunday. And today, I have a long day of watching Kenobi and writing a review for that amazing piece of cultural legacy that I'm sure will live on forever. But before I get started on that, I wanted to at least quickly record something that could come out today. And I know this is a little bit old. As always, I'm perpetually behind the times. It's just a product of getting older. And so I wanted to take a peek at this because you guys, if you haven't seen this yet, you guys will be blown away. This is the TikTok page of Natasha Badger. As always, no one go bother this person. We're not here to uh, dox or dogpile or anything. But she works at LinkedIn in Chicago. And she has quite a few things to say about it. But this one here went viral, both on TikTok and off. Day in the life of 22-year-old living in Chicago, working in the tech industry. Here we go. Today was one of those days where you leave for work at 7 a.m. and you don't get back until past midnight. That sounds like a really busy day, you know? When you're working, like, what is that, 18 hours a day? Let's see her 18-hour work day. I left for work early for a 9 a.m. meeting that was conveniently canceled right beforehand. Wait. Oh, I guess, wait, hold on. Wait, do you have, like, a two-hour commute? You said your day started at 7, but you're, you're you're going into work for a 9 a.m. meeting. Okay. But luckily I got to the lobby and there were these eucalyptus towels waiting for me, which is really <laughs> nice. And some fresh orange water, which I, of course, checked before taking the elevator. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, in the lobby, <laughs> if you work at... It's too early in the morning for this. If you work at LinkedIn, you can expect cold orange water in the lobby along with eucalyptus towels. I don't uh I don't quite know what that means. Like do they do they take the eucalyptus tree and they just uh squeeze all the juice out of it, put it in the towel? Is that what's going on here? Are, are they are they steamed? Maybe they're steamed by burning eucalyptus wood? I don't know. What do you need a eucalyptus towel for? Like what, what, do you, do you like wash yourself like Hold on. So having to take the terrible bus ride across Chicago. I mean fair enough it is Chicago. You come in and you're filthy from having rubbed shoulders with the plebs and you just need a steamed eucalyptus towel <laughs> to brush yourself off with. Also, make sure you use those tongs to grab it. You gotta keep everything sterile and clean, especially because probably some low-level worker put that there for you. <laughs> also, aren't eucalyptus... Hold on. It's a fast-growing evergreen tree native to Australia. Why is eucalyptus harmful to humans? Taking 3.5 milliliters of the oil can be fatal. Can induce nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. <laughs> you know, I thought eucalyptus was just like the food for koalas. But now I guess it's also this shit. And some fresh orange water, which I of course took before taking the elevator up to the office. Of course you have to take the fresh orange water. Who even drinks water without orange slices floating around in it? I grabbed some breakfast, normal oatmeal and chia seed pudding, and we finally got LinkedIn- Wait, wait, wait. Well, what, the, what the fuck is this breakfast? Look at this. You got, like, fresh fruit dishes? Somebody cut this shit up and laid it out for them? I grabbed some breakfast, normal- Normal! This is a normal breakfast? <laughs> I mean, fair enough, it's- it's pretty healthy, you know, you got all the all the all the good grains and nuts and berries in there. Okay. Like this is a this is a healthy breakfast. But Jesus, this ain't normal. Most people aren't eating this. Most most people can't afford to eat it. I don't think I've ever actually worked at a job that had breakfast provided. There's always like eat before you get in. Well, oatmeal and chia seed pudding, and we finally got LinkedIn mugs in the office, which I'm so excited about. Are you are you just scrolling on Amazon as part of your workday? Then I found out that the wall heart that we have in the office is made out of recycled trees from Chicago, which was so cool, fun. <laughs> Recycle Recycled trees. <laughs> you know what? Oh, God. You know what uh, recycled trees is? It's wood. It's paper. <laughs> what do you think your, your house is made out of? What do you think you, you, you write on? It's recycled tree. Man, I came from my my small town that I grew up in had a recycled tree plant. <laughs> in fact, and then it was time for our company all hands, so I grabbed our drink of the day, which is a blackberry mojito, and headed downstairs to the all hands room with some my. Like <laughs> okay, so the company all hands, you get a free blackberry. What the fuck is a mojito? I don't even know. 
Can you imagine working at this place? Sarah, it's time for the meeting. Don't forget to grab your blackberry mojito. <laughs> and I paused on this, like, great-looking lunch. Do they provide the lunch, too? Co-workers, some lunch, because we were starving after that. There was this... Oh, I'm sure you were so starving after that blackberry mojito meeting. And yeah, they, they have, you know, very, what looks to be reasonably high-class food available for them to eat. There was some lunch because we were starving after that. There was this cool little dish, and I grabbed a chai latte before heading to work. Hold on. I grabbed a chai latte before heading to work. You just had lunch. What have you been doing all morning? Sounds like it's just been a, a whirlwind of mojitos and chai lattes and chia puddings. Watch some of my coworkers play ping pong. And then tried out a new <laughs> quiet room, which is a really nice area to just, like, relax and unplug from work. So, your job consists of you dicking around all morning, and then when it's time to really knuckle down, you go to watch your co-workers play ping pong in the lounge. And then tried out a new quiet room, which is a really nice area to just, like, relax and unplug from work. Then <laughs> Unplug from what work? What have you done all day? You're gonna go sit in the quiet room and, like, pretend that you're in a forest or something. Look, look at that wallpaper. And then tried out our new quiet room, which is a really nice area. And then tried out our new quiet room. It's that exact inflection that everyone makes fun of. It's like, it's perfect. This is, this is the perfect TikTok video. Shut the site down, China. It's never getting any better than this. Then it was time to buckle down. Like sat in our focus area for a while. I grabbed. Is is this buckling down? It was time to buckle down. So I sat in the focus area and got kettle potato. What the fuck? Like sat in our focus area for a while. I grabbed a snack after I was hungry, and then I finished up the rest of my work before getting an email announcing <laughs> the next team that I'll be joining through my. Wait, finish up the rest. <laughs> what work even happened today? What? What? Before getting an email announcing the next team that I'll be joining through my BLP program. Work was finally over. Oh, she's joining a new team, getting a promotion. She earned it. All right. What is happen what's, what's happening now that work is finally over? It was hot as hell, so we went to go get some drinks in Lincoln Park. Before heading to a housewarming party for one of our coworkers. Here we are. There was banana pudding. It was just great summer vibes and really fun to connect with everyone. And then we last minute decided, F it, let's go out. Wait. So we headed to West Loop and went to Federale's for a quick drink. At this point, I realized Jesus. that I was still out with my work laptop, so I decided to call it a night. Good night. Today was one of those days. Oh, okay, okay, so that, that, that little last leg of the journey there, that's fine, you know? When, once you're off the clock, do whatever you want. You're going to go drinking. You're going to hit up like three bars and two parties. <laughs> it's not what I would do, but you have fun. But listen to the start of this again. Today was one of those days where you leave for work at 7 a.m. and you don't get back until past midnight. Okay, I mean, that's technically true, right? She did leave for 7 a.m. and didn't get back till past midnight. But, like, everything off the clock after work was just you partying. And then everything on the clock was just you loafing around. <laughs> there's no there's no work happening here, is there? Like, I don't think I've ever had a day this pampered in my life. Even, like, when I was a, a school kid. Were things not laid out this nicely for me? You know, you know the jobs that I've worked? Man, I've been the guy who collects garbage in front of your house in the morning. I've been the guy who cuts all the grass for all the various public green spaces that everyone seems to enjoy so much. I was that guy. I've operated machinery. I've stocked shelves. I've cleaned toilets. Like, actual jobs. No, not, not to say that people who, you know, they don't work with their hands aren't necessarily doing actual work. There's a lot of valuable work that comes out of people who work with their brains. But she's not doing either. Where, there, where is the meaningful labor? It doesn't have to be physical, but it has to be something, right? Now, if you look at this woman's TikTok account, you'll notice that there's actually many different day in the life videos. So for example, here, day in the life as a 22 year old living in, in Chicago, working in tech. Same video, just earlier. Welcome to another day in the life working for LinkedIn Chicago. Get excited guys, because today LinkedIn hosted its second music festival. This is a hybrid experience, oh, so each office had their music own in-person experiences, but everyone could also stream virtually. So I got to the office, picked up my usual <laughs> breakfast. There was a the long line to for coffee, so I had to get some nitro cold brew <laughs> and literally sprinted to a meeting that I was late for with one of the interns and had to try out our special drink of the day, which was like a blackberry fizz, headed to lunch and this- Oh, just had to, look at this lunch. They had like a, like a hot dog cart in the building where the festivities began we had essentially a mini taste of chicago with a lot of local vendors unfortunately i couldn't eat most of the stuff because it had gluten in it but look how pretty and fun this was there was a <laughs> i wonder okay naomi actually has a real gluten intolerance she can't actually eat that much gluten but here's the thing she can eat a little bit 
You know, if we give her like one slice of pizza where the dough is not gluten free, she's okay. But any more than that, and over the course of a day, she starts to have stomach problems. Um, I wonder if this person's actually gluten intolerant or if she's jumped on the bandwagon of eating gluten free stuff because it sounds like organic or healthy or woke or whatever. The photo booth, we had to go pick up our swag. Not a huge fan of the t-shirt, but it's fun. We got glow sticks too. And I took a mini break, played some ping pong with James. He did beat me. Got us. Jesus Christ. Like, this is, th this is the work day. They don't do anything at this place. Once a month, LinkedIn shuts down so its employees can focus on our well-being. And today was one of those days. <laughs> I got up early this morning and in the spirit of well-being, I made myself wait. some chamomile tea journal. Wait, hold on, okay, hold on. I clicked on this because it said day in the life of worker at LinkedIn in Chicago. Because it was because just a bunch of these, right? And this one was like, I didn't go to work today. You know, my, my job is so stressful that I just needed. <laughs> LinkedIn gave us all a day off because it's just brutal there. There's another one where she goes to Google. And yes, at Google, they have the exact same problem where people are just coming in and sucking up unbelievable amounts of money and benefits and gratuities while doing no actual work. And she's done a bunch of these, but see, they haven't gotten that many views as compared to the one here that recently went viral. I mean, she's living a life of bourgeois indulgence, that's for sure, but that's not necessarily wrong or immoral. I'm, I'm not a socialist. However, it does feel like it's something that can't last. It's not sustainable. There's no way this makes money. It's, it's going to come crashing down on them. This is the kind of person that would literally say to the starving peasants, let them eat cake. And of course, she also has most of the normal, progressive, quasi-socialist opinions when it comes to politics. I've personally been over the whole Independence Day thing for a couple of years now, but you guys have fun out there. Tagged with Roe v. Wade and Black Lives Matter. This is for all my girlies who are going through imposter syndrome at work. You're not a white man. <laughs> Therefore, they did not hire you on quality. <laughs> this is for all my girls. <laughs> oh my god. That was like a one-two punch. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter syndrome is when you've made it, but you feel like you don't actually ha deserve to have made it. And so you think that you're an imposter and you're a fraud and you'll be found out and then you'll lose whatever success that you might have earned. And the reason people feel this way is because... You have to live with yourself every day. So you know very deeply all of your greatest failures. However, other people, especially those who are, say, hiring you or promoting you or accepting you, they only see your successes. So everyone feels like, oh man, if they only knew the, the worst side of me, I would lose this great opportunity that I have. And I mean, sometimes that is true. Look at the falls from grace that we've seen. But for the most part, it's not true at all. And the reason why it's so funny is because clearly these people don't deserve anything that they have. But at the same time, she goes on to say, you are not a white man. Therefore, they did not hire you unqualified. What do you think diversity hires are? This person, N Natasha, what do you think you bring to LinkedIn? Are you one of those nerdy guys who is like crouches in front of their computer for like 16 hours a day, writing the actual backbone of the service that everyone uses? Because it doesn't fucking seem like it from these TikToks. So yes, this person is a young professional bourgeois lefty, one of many right now who are out there, basically just sucking up benefits, working at these positions that don't really bring any value to the companies. And although I'm sure this is not the normal Zoomer experience, I in fact know some Zoomers who are very working class and are certainly struggling quite a bit right now. Uh, that's not this person. There does seem to be this microcosm of people who live in these large cities and who work for these, basically these hollowed out giants. They're just subsisting on the decaying mass that is once a great company. And as soon as that falls apart, they'll all be out of jobs. But they don't see the end coming. They're just living high and like, oh, this is this is just life. This is just this is just good. But they don't they don't know how atypical it actually is. So this is something I've been thinking about for a while. It's not a fully formed idea yet, but maybe I can still, I don't know, bounce it off you guys anyway. I was talking with Spoon maybe a, a week or two ago. For those of you who don't know, Spoon is Aiden Paladin's co-host on, over on her show. He's a nice enough guy. We disagree on pretty much everything because he's a monarchist and he's much more right-leaning than I am. But I can talk to people I disagree with as long as they're nice, you know? But I was just casually discussing with him. Um, I didn't use this graph in the discussion, but I'll use it here. You can find graphs like this a lot. This is the share of the labor force employed in agriculture. Share of people of working age who were engaged in any activity to produce goods or provide services for pay or profit in the agricultural sector, which is agriculture, hunting, forestry, and fishing. So basically, what percentage of your society actually works in the creation of food? And as you can see, in the 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, it's pretty steady. We're hovering between like 60 and 75%. 
so most people were working in the production of food. And to get out of that food production industry was actually considered to be a luxury. And if you think back on it, this kind of makes sense, right? Like if you're in prehistory and everyone's just hunting and, and, and foraging for survival, like 99% of your population at that point is working on food. But as soon as people developed basic farming techniques and they didn't have to be nomads anymore and they could actually settle into a city, the reason that that could happen is because farming allowed for excess food produced with less labor, at least compared to hunting and gathering. And so with the excess food, you could actually afford to have more people who provided for society in other still important ways, but weren't directly tied to food production. So you could have people who were smiths, or people who were priests, people who were scholars, people who managed the bureaucracy of a city, you know, like, like guards, people who worked in defense. These are all people who do important labor that helps develop the society, and yet they still eat food without contributing any labor to food production. They still provide meaningful labor, but they have to trade it for the food. And the only way that this trade is even possible is if there is a surplus of food. This is the main reason why hunter-gatherer societies don't really develop any kind of formalized priest class. There's just not enough food to go around to spare individuals to go off and do that sort of thing as a full-time job. And what this graph shows us is that due to technological advancements over time, less and less people have been involved in the production of food. And I'm not complaining about this. This is generally a good thing because what that means is that that's more hands that are freed up to do different types of more specialized labor. That's more brains that are freed up to be able to think up new ideas. And then maybe that develops into something very useful for society. Getting people out of the farms creates a surplus of labor that can then be diversified across an economy, as well as allowing people to deeply specialize in one thing. But there is a side effect of it. We now have a society of people that can work real jobs that do provide real value. But nonetheless, but nonetheless, those jobs are extremely divorced from the most practical concerns like food or housing or clothing. And yet, they can still pay for those things. Money is an abstract way to transfer labor between different mediums, but we've abstracted the whole thing out so much that somehow I can make YouTube videos that generate enough equivalent labor as a worker who grows the food that I buy in the grocery store. And it's this extreme level of abstraction that leads a lot of people, especially if they've never actually worked a real working class job before, these people, they, they become unmoored from reality. There seems to be, at least to me, a connection between the people who believe in progressivism and socialism and a prosperous enough lifestyle to be extremely disconnected from the essential labor that keeps them alive. I'm sure you've you've heard this story many times. You, there's like a university professor who is like, food comes from the store. Why do we have to kill animals? Why do we have farms? Why do you have to shoot them? Why do you have to hunt? That's, that's barbaric. Food just, just buy food at the store. And like they don't know where the food comes from because they're so divorced from that part of reality. These people think that socialism works because they are so disconnected from how society runs that they don't understand why it wouldn't work. It's having the privilege of being blind to how the sausage is made. And this LinkedIn woman, it's not her fault. She's not doing anything wrong, like morally. She's taking advantage of a system that allows her to live this opulent life. But there's nothing real about it. It's, it's all very manufactured. It's all very artificial. It's all very divorced from the actual reality that most people have to live. And I don't even think that she knows that that's the case. You know, if you go really far down on her page, she talks about her university experience. And it seems like she went to a pretty good university for graphic design. Like this this person came from an upper middle class life for sure. She's never going to know what it's like to drive a truck for 16 hours or have to take garbage to the dump. She fundamentally doesn't know about everything happening outside of her field of vision that allows her to have this this very cushy bourgeois life, which is what makes it absolutely ridiculous that so many people who live in these ivory towers think that their ideas are how society should be structured. Things should be done according to their theories, but they're just so ignorant of everything. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this hangout with Dev, and I will see you next time. I love you.